Hi precious gems, uh, welcome to my channel once more and today's, um, today's talk is, today's video, not talk, Jesus, today's video is going to be a little more different, um, I mean it's my second video but whatever. Uh, we're not going to focus on beauty, fashion, blah, 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 blah. We're actually going to, I'm actually going to share about something that's really, that's a personal passion of mine. Currently, I am in Amsterdam. I'm attending a conference, um, Next Gen HIV by World G Education. And well, today was the end of the second day, which was the end of the days of like session sessions. And then tomorrow is a little bit lighter today. We'll attend the... ISA um, 2018 conference in Amsterdam and I just wanted to share with you have my own TED talk about the few things that I've learned in the past two days and I think as youth as uh, people on social media as the next generation are important to understand when it comes to like HIV and stuff so the biggest thing that we mostly focused on was the stigma that exists around people who are currently infected with the HIV virus. And the thing that got to me was um, many people still have this ideology that HIV equals death. You know, like if you have HIV, then it's a one time life sentence. Well, yes, in a sense, it is a life sentence, but not a death sentence. Um, currently, there is no cure, as people know. Scientists are working hard and long to find a cure, and I hope to, you know, in the near future, be a part of those scientists who are looking for a cure. That's a strong, strong passion of mine. But HIV as a virus is a life sentence in the sense that with you have to be on treatment, for the rest of your life until the virus, until we find a cure for it. So it's not a death sentence, not anymore, not since we have ARVs that are working so well. It is not a death sentence and people should, you know, stop um, treating people with HIV virus like it is. They are normal people, just that they carry a virus that, you know, they just carry a virus, another one of these viruses that exist in the world. There are so many microorganisms that exist. There are so many viruses we carry. And it's just another one of those things. And if a person who has HIV um, is on their medication, then they should be fine. They're just an ordinary person just who has one other virus that you probably don't have. And, you know, stigma... I think if we stop treating people who have HIV like they're different, like they're so bad, then, you know, we could improve the statuses. I mean, we could improve people's lives in the sense that they feel like it's okay that, you know, it happened and they have HIV, but they can live a normal life. They can be treated like a normal person. I feel like personally it would motivate them to um, even want to seek out treatment or continue treatment because then it's just one of those things. And I think as youth, um, we need to stop holding on to the, the, the stories that um, the older generation might have told us. Yes, when HIV was first realized and discovered 34, 35 years ago, it was devastating because people our age were dying. But it's we are not in that time frame anymore. People are living with HIV full lives. And like people are able to have children even with HIV and have HIV negative children. So I think as as a generation, I'd like to motivate us to stop or point out to people that um, it's it's definitely unfair 
to to see someone as different or um just because they have a virus that you don't have you know um yeah which brings me to the second point um with arv treatment many people are reaching an undetectable stage now what that means is they're reaching a point where the viral load is so low or inactive in their body that they are, they, the, the, vir the virus is undetectable. And a, a phrase I learned um, during this conference was U equals U. So undetectable equals untransmittable. And many people are reaching that stage where they um, have a viral load so low that they're undetectable. Um, I mean, precaution still has to be taken, you know, but it's it's amazing to think that 35 years ago we had this virus that no one knew what to do, you know, how to handle it, how to protect people from dying. And, you know, three decades later, we have treatments and medications that are, may, are allowing people to even reach levels where their viral load is so low, it's undetectable, and it's it's absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to like let you guys know that if you know anyone or you know anyone who's positive, um, you can motivate them by saying you know you can live a completely normal life um, on your treatment. That you know. Um, let's see. Then I wanted to appeal, yes, this is a very important one. Um, a big issue that I've realized that comes with informing people about not only HIV, but other STDs is, especially like from Zambia and stuff, I've realized that in our parents, there's this uncomfortable attitude around the issue of sex. Um, which I feel in some way endangers us. Um, you know, we end up in positions where it's too late. Um, Zambia is a Christian nation, so abstinence is, you know, highly recommended in a person's life. But the truth of the matter is not everyone is abstinent. And, you know, because everyone assumes that abstinence is something that everyone's going to follow, nobody wants to start the, the conversation about sex. No one wants to sit down and have a TV show, you know, focused at 14, 15 year olds to talk about sex, um, how to have healthy sexual relationships, if you're going to engage in sexual relationships, or how to, you know, protect yourself in those sexual relationships, the consequences, the benefits, no one is talking about that. And I think that is the what that is one of the most endangering things that we have in I don't want to say African culture because I can't speak for all the African countries, but that's one of the most endangering things we have because I once spoke to an uh, um a relative, and you know um what I got from the conversation was us or a, a parent or an adult having this conversation to talk about sex and use condoms and you know always be prepared they feel like parents feel like having that conversation is in in a way giving permission to your child to you know be involved in sexual activities but the danger in that is Teenagers are very secretive, um, so whether you might want to or not want to, your child may or may not be, or your sibling or your cousin may or may not be already participating in sexual activities. And if you are not having these conversations, you know, to tell them as to, okay, yes, a condom is not just a rubber little thing that a guy puts on his genitals before sex, it's more of a... A protection and this is how it works and this is why it's important you know um, when a little 15 year old girl has a sugar daddy and she doesn't understand the value of a condom and you're surprised when she falls pregnant and or is HIV positive you, you as parents then you only have yourselves to blame because you never told your 15 you never told your 15 year old these things and 
I think another thing that parents forget is at this stage, from about 14 to, I want to say 25, that's when you're most likely to be sexually experimental. Um, you're most likely to have sex. You're most likely, you know, hormonally driven or attracted to someone. You're trying the waters. You're having your first boyfriend. You're having your first kiss. And I think it's important that at those stages that um, parents and adults and parental supervisors are having these conversations with their children so that even if, so that when they have the choice, you know, at the end of the day, you're not with this child all the time. And when you are, with, when you're not there and they're faced with this choice of should I have sex and should I not, they fully understand that if I have sex in this moment with no protection whatsoever, these are the consequences. And another mistake that we make, which doesn't really work, unfortunately, parents, please forgive me, is we paint, first of all, we paint sex as this monster. Like, don't touch sex. It's, it's disgusting. Don't do it. And you make it awkward, you know, to the point where you're watching TV with your parents and a sexual scene comes on and you have to pretend like you're not watching because you don't want your parents to think that um, you know what sex is. We, we need to stop making sex awkward because sex isn't awkward. It's human, it's natural, it has its time and its place. Don't get me wrong. Um, sex, I believe, I believe as a public health major, um, looking at STDs and stuff, I would truly say like, sex is essential for uh, people. It's, 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 it has its time and it has its place, but not everyone's time and place is the same. Um, and I think we just need to stop making sex this awkward conversation that no one really talks about. And they give you a conversation about birds and bees and you're not exactly sure what the birds and the bees are doing, you know? And I think it's time we teach sex for what sex is. I was talking to a few people I met um, here in the Netherlands and they're telling me that by the time they're ages 11 and 12, maybe 10, they're already being introduced to the topic of sex and in a way that they're telling these kids sex is okay, but this is how to protect yourself. Like, teenagers are not always abstinent and parents always want to believe that they are until it's too late. And I'd rather live in a world where we're preparing our youth before it's too late. We're not having conversations about HIV when half of our population has HIV. We're having these conversations when that, I mean, half of that age group has HIV. We're having these conversations before these individuals reach that at-risk stage to reduce the risk. I can assure you, if you told a group of 12 to 13 year olds what sex was. Yes, it would be awkward because 13, 14 year olds are just awkward. And you told them that these are the consequences and they're very scary consequences. But I think it's important to let, to have our youth understand sex because if they don't understand sex, we can't protect them from the consequences of sex. If I think for me, I'm a strong advo advocate for education. Um, I'm a strong adv advocate for having these awkward talks, these awkward conversations, these, these things that nobody wants to deal with. I'm a strong advocate for them because I believe if you're informed beforehand, you have better resources to protect yourself when you're in that position. And, you know, one of my dreams is hopefully opening an organization in Zambia where I can go to kids and talk about these things and in a way that they can understand. I don't want to throw facts. At and yeah, I hope that in the future I can have more detailed and factual conversations about this topic. Um, amongst other things, I think we should really focus on protecting those who are most vulnerable. And I know 
And if you're a person who um, is HIV positive, in, I would like to encourage you to um, stay consistent with your treatment. Um, yes, I, I would imagine taking a pill every day would be absolutely annoying, but you know, you is you, undetectable is tr untransmittable, and in that way, you're not only protecting yourself, so you're protecting others. I would encourage you to share your stories. Um, you can email me. My email will be in the description bar. I would love to hear um, your stories and you know how you feel about what I've just shared. Um, yeah, and you know if you are HIV positive, you are not fighting this battle by yourself. I've seen a good number of like a hundred and something youth just here in Amsterdam who are absolutely dedicated, you know, and encouraged to help you fight this battle so you're not alone. Um, and I mean, I want to be a, a, a safe environment. So if you're watching this video and you're HIV positive or HIV negative, but you're very confused, um, send me an email, um, catch up with me on social media, hit me up, DM me, I, I respond to my DMs, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't, you know, um, I respond to my DMs and, you know, if you're looking for a friend who you can share stuff with and not have a too personal relationship with, um, you can talk with me. I'm not a professional counsellor, I just want to put that disclaimer out, but, I can be a friend and you know I can help recommend you to people if you need any one professional to talk to but I would like to be a safe environment for for you guys so hit me up in my emails or in my DMs you know my Instagram and stuff but yeah that's all I had to say on this topic that's all I wanted to share that's what I've learned um and i hope to catch you guys next time um thank you for watching my ted talk you know the let's talk about hiv and you know stay encouraged talk about sex let's let's make this a less awkward conversation but until next time bye guys